Bill here from Maple Leaf Enterprises. I'm going to talk a little bit about security today. Uh, getting a lot of requests uh, for some security audits. And I'm going to show you one quick, easy, low hanging fruit security implementation you can do on your databases that uh, will get you started, so to speak, with security. So just a couple of things though, just realize that anything that I'm gonna be going over here, as far as implement, implementing this, uh, you're gonna to wanna to obviously do this on a test system. I wouldn't just run and do this on a production system. Also realize that uh, you are going to be the disruptor. There's people who've been working for a while with one level of security. Uh, and then usually when things are to get changed from a security point of view, it's going to impact your staff. Uh, so just be aware of that and be a little understanding uh, from their point of view because the you know this is not going to be uh, something there everyone's just going to embrace you and say, oh, you know doing a great job. Thank you for putting all these hurdles in front of me uh, for doing my job, uh, but you are going to better your Oracle implementation and make it more secure by doing, uh, doing this. Um, so let's get started and look at what we are going to do. Um, the simplest thing in the world to do is implement encryption on the server side. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to log into your box as the user who has and is the owner of the listener, the Oracle listener. So in my case, it's the grid user. I also have grid uh, infrastructure installed. Uh, most cases, even if you're in a standalone, you're gonna be using grid infrastructure if you're using ASM. Uh, the grid user is the person who usually owns uh, the listener. If you have a standalone and you're not using grid infrastructure, chances are it's the Oracle user using, who is the owner of the listener. Uh, now, I'm going to be using Net Manager for this particular implementation. And the reason why is this. Uh, there are some settings in the SQLnet.ora file that actually get created by performing this encryption. And if you don't do it right, or it's a new implementation and the sqlnet.ora file does not exist, it's always best to do it through this utility because then you're ensured that everything is going to be configured the way Oracle likes it. Uh, if you're familiar with how not only the sqlnet.ora, but also the listener.ora and the tnsnames.ora, it can get, Oracle can be a little finicky about how things are done in there when using the command line like VI and, and Emacs and things like that. Uh, there are times when stuff gets put in there or you hit the space bar for whatever reason, there's an error and you save it and Oracle's not going to like that. It's gonna complain and you're gonna get an error and it's not going to be good. So my recommendation is if you have not set this up somewhere before at all, use this first, and then you could use this as a template uh, in a sqlnet.ora file to implement elsewhere uh, on other systems. So if this is the first time, use this, get the file set up, right and go that route. Just makes life a lot easier. Believe me, I know I got gray hair, uh, and a bald spot in the back. I've been doing this enough that I know that it's happened to me. I've gone in and I've gone through VI and I've made changes and then implement them and I could sworn, you know, on my life that I know I did it right and for whatever reason, Oracle just would not accept it, complained, threw a hissy fit, went into Net Manager, did it, created it, and everything worked. So just easier and cleaner, especially again, for a new implementation of this. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. It's really actually pretty easy. Uh, if, you, if you really kind of look at it, you come in here, you go into network security, you're gonna go to encryption. It's gonna default to server. 
That's the one you're going to want to use. Now, there's a couple different types. There's accepted, there's rejected, there's requested, there's required. Just use accepted. If you want to go and look at the different options and what exactly it is that they do specifically, you could go pull up the documentation, go into the Oracle security documentation. Um, each of those options are outlined what they do and what they don't do. I just use accepted, it's fine with me. Uh, and then for available method, my recommendation is just stick with AES-256 or RC-4-256. Either one of those is fine. These other ones are being phased out slowly but surely, um, especially the ones down the bottom. I just prefer to use AES-256. It's simple and easy. And then you're gonna need to come out and create an encryption seed. Now this can be anything from 10 to 70 characters, alphanumeric. Uh, don't use brackets. I will just say that because if you use brackets, you have to put them in quotes and it's, it's a pain in the neck. There are other ways uh, to deal with that. So what I usually say to do, the easiest thing to do is pull up, a, pull up VI and just create a file and then just type something in that's alphanumeric, right? So this is my seed, right? Pretty simple, it's more than 10 characters. I can remember it. I wouldn't recommend using this, but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. Generally, if a customer's gonna ask me, you know, to create a, a, a seed for them, I'm gonna come up with something that has to do with their company. Uh, so, you know, if, if it's a, you know, if they're a market research company, I may come up with something that relates to marketing and make the seed something like that so that if I do actually share it with the company, it's something people can remember too, that it's just not some random set of, even though it should be a, a random set, I try to give it at least something that is rememberable so that if there is a problem that we can go back and actually know what it is so we don't have to change it everywhere, but that's up to you. You know, there's all different standards. Some people say I'm out of my mind to actually think to do that, but you know, it's a give and take. You know, you have to do what you need to do, but you also need to make it somewhat user-friendly so that people remember it because most people are not gonna remember it anyway. Uh, unless they have some kind of vault. Some places have like, you know, a, a Dropbox vault so that they stick these types of things in. Uh, you could do that as well. Uh, so anyway, that is what you're gonna wanna do. So you're gonna wanna copy that and then you're going to paste it in here. All right, and that is gonna be your encryption seed. And then you're gonna wanna go up here and go into file. And you're going to want to save network configuration. All right, and it is saved. Now, if there was an issue with this, it would have popped up, the encryption seed is invalid or you know something, it would have threw some error up, like, you know, it, it is not right, it doesn't like this, choose something else, but it did not, okay? So now, if we go in here and we exit, and we go back into our command line, let's go into Oracle Home Network, okay? And then it's gonna be in the admin directory and it's gonna be in the sqlnet.ora. Uh, and if we do a long listing here, it should have today's date and it does. All right, so now here we're gonna just go in and view and see what it did. And this is what it did. Now again, you could go in and actually do this manually in the file. And I don't have a problem with that and I don't have a problem with doing that. But as I said, if you've never done this before on a particular system, which I have not done that before on there, this can be an issue. Because if you don't have all these settings with the exact space, like I will tell you the truth, I don't do this all the time. I wouldn't have known to put a space in here, or here, or around this. 
And you you think, oh, well, they shouldn't be a problem. Sometimes it is. I'm telling you, it's happened to me where I've put it in and then Oracle's complain like, hey, it's not working. It's not working. So anyway, now you have this set up. What you could easily do now is you could take this SQLNet.ora file and if you need to implement this elsewhere, you can actually go and copy this or SCP this into your other systems. All right, so now you have one set up. It's all done. You're ready to go. And there it is. So it's all set up and you don't need to do that again. So you really only have to use that tool once and then you're you're done. Have a nice day. Then you can just actually copy this and be done with it. So that's how you implement encryption. Now, what you're going to have to do is, let's just go back in there. What you're going to have to do uh, with this uh, is you're going to have to implement this on the client side as well, because the client is not going to be able to communicate unless it has this encryption seed and this type of encryption method set up. Uh, so really all you're gonna wanna do for the clients is you, where it says server, you're gonna change that to client. So again, you could take this information, copy it, SCP it, and then you can blow that out to your clients. Whoever it is you do it, if you do it through some kind of Microsoft product, if they're Microsoft, you know, if you have some kind of implementation tool or if you just want to, I wouldn't recommend emailing it to somebody. I would not recommend that. Please don't do that. Uh, but that would be what you need to change. You would need to change this from server to client. All right, and then there you have it. And that would actually implement encryption on your listener. So at least stuff going back and forth from client to server over the network, over the listener is encrypted. That's it, I hope this helps. And last but not least, if you want to get all the documentation, let's just do that real quick. If you wanna get the documentation uh, on this, you can actually go, this is actually a great tool and you can see I have it up. Um, I've never by any means claimed to be a know-it-all. I am not, I'm not Burleson, um, you know, where I'm going to, you know, give you the look out of the side of my eye or wear my cowboy hat uh, and totally plagiarize all the Oracle documentation ever created. Uh, I'll be more than happy to show you. You just go to Docs. Oracle has some phenomenal, phenomenal security. You just go to security. Here it is right here. You go to docs.oracle, right? Go under database. There is a whole slew of a whole slew of documentation on all the different security methods. Uh, and let me tell you, the documentation is extremely thorough and it also has plenty of examples, right? So they have this two day, do, do yourself a favor and go through this two day security guide. Right, it's a pretty good overview. A lot of it you'll probably just blow through, like, yeah, all right, all right, I, I, I know that, I know that. But it's a good review to kind of get your feet wet with the whole security process. Uh, and they do break it down on all the different methods. You know, I'm talking about encryption. Uh, redaction is another one that's really, really important, and that's actually really cool. Uh, in 12C now, they have this uh, this redaction of data, uh, which is actually I could actually do a whole multi-part series on that particular um, security mechanism. But you see here, there's all this documentation really, and you can actually make yourself a security expert in no time if you take the time uh, to go through many of this documentation here. Uh, so anyway, that's it. I hope this helps. And uh, you know, have fun implementing encryption and just, uh, Beware that, uh, um, you know, you actually may make some enemies for a short time, but uh, I'm sure eventually you'll wind up going out for a beer uh, with whoever it is and, and laughing about it when it's all said and done.